Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Queensland Performing Arts Trust would like to remind you that the use of flash photography is prohibited during the graduation ceremony and that all mobile phones are to be switched off. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the graduation ceremony for the graduates of the Faculty of Education. In a few minutes, the graduation ceremony will commence. The procession of dais and staff parties will enter. I will signal to you when you are to rise and remain standing until all members of the staged party are seated. Ms. Lenine Ford will now address us. Mr. Norm Fussell, Professor Bill Lovegrove, Acting Vice Chancellor, members of the Griffith University Council, distinguished guests, colleagues, graduates, and ladies and gentlemen. It is the custom for Griffith University and its guests to gather and celebrate the conferral of academic awards on its graduates. So on behalf of the Council of the University, I'm pleased to extend a very warm welcome to everyone present for this graduation ceremony. 
This occasion holds special significance for our graduates because this evening, in the presence of family and friends and the entire university community, your dedication and hard work are recognized and rewarded. I would like to extend a special welcome to Mr. Norman Fussell, who gave dedicated service as Deputy Chancellor of Griffith University from 1993 until his retirement in, in the year 2000, last year. He will receive the university's honorary degree, Doctor of the University, and will deliver this evening's occasional address. Our students graduating this evening are from the Faculty of Education and will, I'm sure, also make valuable contributions professionally and as responsible citizens. Griffith is one of the largest multi-campus universities in Australia and is formed by an integrated network of six campuses stretching from the Gold Coast to here at South Bank on the Brisbane River. From these campuses, Griffith serves the higher education needs of its students and its related communities in the Brisbane Gold Coast region, as well as nationally and internationally. The university's commitment to the pursuit of excellence in teaching, research, and community service is embedded in its forward-looking approach that combines the best of university traditions and values with innovation. The hallmark of Griffith University's activities is the bringing together of disciplines in the development of courses and research activities that meet the changing needs of society. Its activities are enhanced by the university's close links with business and the community. The value of these links is nowhere more obvious than in the mentoring program which provides our students with the opportunity to gain valuable work experience and industry connections. Griffith has always had an international approach to education and now has one of the most extensive networks of international linkages in Australia. Its international student population is one of the largest in Queensland but Griffith also seeks to inculcate an international outlook in its Australian students, who it encourages to study overseas. Last year, many Griffith students attended institutions overseas under the university's scholarship and exchange programs. To our graduating students, may I say that now your studies are completed, you are joining an elite group there's only a small percentage of the Australian population possessing tertiary qualifications. And as members of this group, you can expect to enjoy better employment prospects and hopefully higher salary levels than people with less education. I'm sure you realize by now that education not only brings important social benefits, but also a particular responsibility to work for a better world, to be sensitive and active on issues of social justice, and to be competent, ethical, and hardworking professionals. If I was asked what I would wish for the graduates, I would preface my comments by commending you on the achievements you, which already signify your personal determination, energy, and the ability to make differences in your own lives. However, it takes more than determination to succeed. The building blocks provided by the university and the support of your family and friends should never be underestimated. What I wish for you individually throughout your lives is good health, good friends, the support and comfort of a special person who loves you, the courage to stand up for your beliefs, the courage to tell it as you see it, even if it is the unpopular view, the divergent view. And in addressing the young graduates in particular, in the years ahead, you will change. Time, your career, and the people in your lives will affect this change. How you react will depend on your attitude, you will grow and learn and hear of things that are not always found in books, 
or online, you will discover diverse aspects of the human condition, and I hope that added to the wonderful knowledge you already possess that will nurture tolerance and understanding. My final hope for all graduates is that your years of preparation to reach this point will be the impetus for much more work and study that will reward you with many years of happiness and fulfillment. I hope you will always give back to the world in keeping with your education and opportunities. So as we continue with this evening's proceedings, I would again express warm congratulations to each of you and extend to you our best wishes for your lives ahead and, if you want, a brilliant career. I'd now call on the dean who will present the graduates from this Faculty of Education who are to receive their awards at this ceremony. Chancellor Professor Marilyn McMenamin, Dean of the Faculty of Education. Chancellor, I present graduates from the Faculty of Education who have been granted the following awards. Bachelor of Adult and Vocational Education, Chris Andre. Will Baker. Malcolm Blow. John Brackenrig. <laughs> Leslie Campbell. <laughs> Joy Cotter. Gavin Galatley. John Hagen. Derek McLeod. <clears throat> Catherine Nelson. Melissa Peacock. Mary Peterson. Brendan Ross. Chancellor Alan Scheller sadly died after the completion of his studies. His wife Maureen Scheller will accept Alan's testama on his behalf. Alan Scheller. <laughs> Ross Sirkham. Bernadette Spelter. <laughs> Bachelor of Adult and Vocational Teaching, Karen Constable.
Paul Eames. Beverly Jackson. George Nelson. Bachelor of Arts, Kelly Bainham. Roy Dean. Rebecca Dengate. Zoe Knight. Jessica Meehan. Barry Peterson. Bachelor of Education, Melissa Alexander. Rachel Allen. Jolene Ashby. Benjamin Austin. Rebecca Badman. Kelly Baldwin. Kylie Barrett. Amanda Barry. Lauren Bastion. Rebecca Batch. Wendy Bauer. Dimitra Barbius. Belinda Bean. Margot Birmingham. Nola Bishop. Margaret Blowers. Daniela Boca. Colleen Boval. Shane Brogdon. Simone Brooking. Carolyn Brown. Julie Brown.
Sam Bugaya. Katie Booman. Clint Bullock. Sophie Bushby. Nicole Cadet. Anthony Caruso. Ruth Cheetah. Marilise Chetty. Fiona Charles. Lystra Chinfet. Renee Chiverton. Cassandra Chow. Nicole Clapper. Matthew Clark. Marion Clawson. Marie Cockerell. Melinda Coles. Emma Collins. Nicole Comrie. Patrick Keneally. Crystal Corley. Sonia Cornwall. Jenny Coyle. Yvonne Cross. Donna Crowley Hodgson. Michael Curtis. Rachel Dads. <laughs> Sally Daly. <laughs> Stacy Dallas. <laughs> Peter Dawson. Jessica Dilajara. <laughs> T. 
Tina DiMedio. Rebecca Diamond. Vicky Diefenbach. Robin Diggles. Nadia Distel. Kylie Dobbs. Neva Dorr. Stuart Trinkeld. Jessly Engelhart. Cheryl Fangies. Abigail Fairclough. Suzanne Fleming Keys. Michelle Forsyth. Eleanor Foster. Kerry Gare. Paulina Galaraga. Jason Glancy. Christina Gao. Lyndall Grayson. Kelly Green. Alison Haddock. Sharon Hall. Eleanor Hamilton. Stephen Hannam. Shannon Hay. Carly Hayes. Melanie Heffernan. <laughs> Kathleen Hennessy. <laughs> Melanie Henry.
Benita Habagodesh. <laughs> Chancellor, the next graduate has been awarded the Special Education Medal for 2000 for the most outstanding academic achievement in a bachelor's degree, Amanda Hines. Rebecca Hinson. <laughs> Megan Hodinot. <laughs> Belene Holmes. Pearl Holmes. <laughs> Renee Hopkins. <laughs> Victoria Hornsby. Kelly Howard. <laughs> Tamlin Hoy. <laughs> Gypsy Hughes. Deborah Highland, Sharon Illingsworth, Jasmine Ireland. Ben Jack. <laughs> Pippa Jarman. <laughs> Sharon Jekyll. <laughs> Tracy Johnson. Genevieve Kapuska. <laughs> Belinda Kennedy. <laughs> Jesse Kerr. Louise Keys. <laughs> Gary King. <laughs> Michelle Kramer. Leah Krantz. <laughs> Eamon Lawless. <laughs> Gary Lawrence.
Linda Leck. Annie Lepper. Luke Lilly. Christella Luca. Nicole Lovelock. Robert Lund. Lorna Lyon. Larissa Maddock. Louise Maguire. Simon Marsden. Tamara Martin. John Martinak. Tanya Martinez. Simon Monsell. Peter McAllister. <laughs> Debbie McCann. <laughs> Renee McConaughey. Colleen McFarlane. Danielle McIntosh. Amarita McLean. Karen McLeod. Yeah. Emma McPherson. Yeah. Kate Monaghan. Karen Moore. Cassandra Moss. Nusha Mugridge. Felicity Murray. <laughs> Lyndall Murray. <laughs> Michelle O'Connor.
Mark O'Carney. Rebecca Pierce. Raylene Pettigrew. Natalie Pickering. <laughs> Sam Porteous. <laughs> Amanda Pye. Nadia Rain. <laughs> Naila Rain. <laughs> Nusha Reed. Vicky Rogers. Chantal Rose. Kurt Rose. Angela Rossito. Kate Russ. Nicole Ryan. Warda Sali. <laughs> Kerry Saunders. <laughs> Scott Saxby. Lynette Shreyways. <laughs> Rhiannon Scott. <laughs> Marie Scroy. Bradley Shine. <laughs> Carla Siddons. <laughs> Richard Symes. Michaela Simmons. <laughs> Tammy Simmons. <laughs> Madonna Skelly. Michaela Smurden. <laughs> T. 
Tanya Smith. Annabelle Snowden. Jason Sperling. Kylie Sturgis. Wendy Swan. Dana Taylor. Yvette Taylor. Natalie Thompson. <clears throat> Catherine Thorne. Leone Torisi. Kate Trion. John Turner. Emma Twig. Rachel Vanzino. John Vertuccio. <laughs> Kylie Waite. <laughs> Olivia Wern. Nolene Weatherhog. <laughs> Shelley Webb. <laughs> Kelly Weber. Keith Whitcomb. Gregory Williams. Jody Williams. Katie Williams. <laughs> Annette Willey. <laughs> Rebecca Winstanley. Dale Wolfenden. <laughs> Megan Wonka. <laughs> Cassie Wright. Miranda Wright.
Bachelor of Education with First Class Honours. Chancellor, the next graduate has been awarded the Education Medal for 2000 for the most outstanding academic achievement in a bachelor's degree, Christine MacDonald. Bachelor of Education with Second Class Honours Division A, Angela Marsden. Sarah Rowe. Bachelor of Technology Education, Clint Adamson. Joy Argo. Stuart Burrows. Chancellor, the next graduate has been awarded the Technology Education Medal for 2000 for the most outstanding academic achievement in a bachelor's degree, Neil Butters. <laughs> Darren Clinkett. Darren Daunt. Chris Davey. Chris Hames. Alan Hoskins. John Jennings. Brendan Kruger. Justin Kumaro. James Lansbury. Gary Lawrence. Paul Lowe. <laughs> Craig Mab. Andrew McDowell. Mark McMullen. John Mulhall.
Mark Nell. Martin Rugrock. Andrew Cero. Mark Steele. Bachelor of Technology Education, Second Class Honours, Division A, Philip Reed. <laughs> Jason Newcomb. Graduate Certificate in Applied Linguistics, Claudia Lloyd West. <clears throat> Graduate Certificate in Computer Education, Barry Peterson. Graduate Certificate in Higher Education, Barry Malaysia. <clears throat> David Rankin. Graduate Certificate in Special Education, Michelle Johnson. <clears throat> Graduate Diploma of Adult and Vocational Education, Margie Messenberg. <clears throat> Graduate Diploma of Training and Development, Kim Richards. <clears throat> Master of Arts in Applied Linguistics, Indika Yananda Barala Lianage. <clears throat> Stephanie Dunn. Margaret Murphy. <clears throat> Susan Snedden. <clears throat> Jacinta Webb. Master of Education, Sharon Fan Sang. <clears throat> Master of Education Studies, Tricia Clark. <clears throat> Master of Special Education, Roy Anderson. <clears throat> Belinda Drew. <clears throat> Karen Gallagher. Beverly McFarlane. <clears throat> 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 
Susan Malar. Cheryl Malavi. Kerry Speakman. Master of Philosophy, Karen Caton. Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of graduates of the Faculty of Education. Ladies and gentlemen, there will now be a brief musical interlude performed by the students of the Queensland Conservatorium, Griffith University.
Chancellor, Professor Dennis Lincoln, Deputy Vice-Chancellor Research, will now present candidates for the award of Doctor of Education and the award of Doctor of Philosophy. Chancellor, I will now present candidates for the award of the degrees of Doctor of Education and Doctor of Philosophy. Today, the university is proud to honor graduates who have satisfied the rigorous criteria for the award of these degrees. Chancellor, the following graduate has been granted the degree of Doctor of Education taken in the Faculty of Education. Dr. Radan's research examined the frames and frame factors that affected teacher curriculum decision-making when implementing a new senior syllabus in physical education in Queensland schools. Chancellor, I present Dr. Gregory Radan. <laughs> Chancellor, the following graduates have been granted the degree of Doctor of Philosophy taken in the Faculty of Education. Dr. Dunn undertook a case study of pre-adolescent girls' dramatic play. The findings challenge conventional understanding of the nature of that play and highlight its dramatic qualities. Chancellor, I present Dr. Julie Patricia Dunn. Dr. Umara studied the act of reflection in action during process drama teaching. The research highlights the implement implications of reflective practice teaching and the issues that are raised. Chancellor, I present Dr. Joanne Allison Umara. Dr. Seo developed an intervention program for teachers of Japanese, which subsequently improved the strategic listening comprehension of tertiary students of Japanese. Chancellor, I present Dr. Kayoko Seo. Dr. Swepson compared action research and scientific methodologies within the context of organizational change in agriculture. Chancellor, I present Dr. Pamela Joyce Swepson. <laughs> Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of Doctor of Education and Doctor of Philosophy graduates. With the authority of the council, I shall now confer the degree of doctor of the university, and I call upon the deputy vice chancellor, the acting vice chancellor, Professor Bill Lovegrove, to read the citation. Chancellor. The Council of the University has resolved to award the degree of Doctor of the University to Mr. Norman Fussell. Norman Fussell was born in Nambour, Queensland in 1937. He was educated at Toowoomba State High School, Toowoomba Technical College and later at the University of Queensland where through external studies he gained accounting qualifications. He continued to further his education in the areas of cost accounting, tax and marketing, and participated in the International Senior Management Program at Harvard University and the International Program for Board Members at the International Management Institute at Geneva University. Norman Fussell's broad experience in accounting, finance, marketing, and particularly in engineering, mechanical and construction, and mining, led him to chief executive officer positions within a number of major companies. 
He was associated with the Thies Group of Companies for almost 10 years before being appointed as Director and Executive General Manager of MIM Holdings Limited in 1980. In 1990, he was appointed as Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of the same company. During this period, he also served as Director and Chairman of a number of companies in Australia and abroad, developing experience with boards in the United States, Canada, Germany and the United Kingdom, as well as numerous joint ventures in the international marketplace. Norman Fussell has been Chairman and Director of Flight Centre Limited since 1995, Director of Anaconda Nickel Limited, Limited since 1995, and was recently appointed Chairman of the same company. The name Storm and Norman was first applied to him by the press and by the New York bankers in late 1970s at the time of the CSR takeover of Tees, long before the Storm and Norman Swatskoff of Gulf War fame. In a long and distinguished business career, he has made significant contributions to his profession as a member of the Business Council of Australia, the Trade Policy Advisory Council and the Prime Minister's Science and Engineering Council, as well as as President of the Queensland Mining Council. Norman Fussell served on the Griffith University Council as an appointee of the Governor and Council from 1991 to 2000 and was elected as Deputy Chancellor for eight consecutive years from 1993 to 2000. In contributing to the deliberations of Council and its subcommittees, he became widely respected within the University for his pragmatic leadership, wise counsel and business acumen. As Chairperson of the Finance and Property Committee from 1992 until 2000, he provided invaluable guidance and external oversight during a period when the university was rapidly expanding and making heavy investments in physical and electronic infrastructure. As Deputy Chancellor, Norman Fussell's wise and often challenging counsel to management and the council itself was of great benefit to the university during a period of rapid change in higher education in Australia. In particular, he focused the university's attention on the need to increase its entrepreneurial activities to improve its performance in attracting funds from non-government sources and to measuring its own performance in the financial area. As well as serving on many of the Council's major committees and ad hoc working parties, Norman Fussell also chaired the working party established by Council in 1998 to review the effects of changes to the administration of the university arising from academic restructuring in 1997. Under his guidance, the Working Party was responsible for bringing forward a number of wide-ranging recommendations which led to significant changes in administration and management areas of the university. The university is indebted to Norman Fussell for his tremendous dedication and distinguished service during his term of office on council. He maintains a keen interest in education through his role as an adjunct professor of the School of Management at the University of Queensland and Griffith University's Graduate School of Management. His contributions in this role of Griffith are greatly appreciated as he not only inspires interesting questions from the students, but he also insists on putting challenging questions to them. In addition to his very full working life, Norman Fussell has long had a strong involvement with the community. In the 1950s, he had a strong association with swimming on the downs when he was secretary of the Toowoomba District Amateur Swimming Association and the Darling Downs Regional Swimming Association. In the 60s, he was president of the Dolby Kindergarten Association and in the 70s, president of the Mount Cravat Kindergarten Association. He has been president of the Queensland Youth Orchestra since 1995 and vice president of the Brookfield Centre for Christian Spirituality since 1997. It is fitting that Griffith University should honour Dr Mr Norman Fussell in recognition of his distinguished contributions to Griffith University and to the business community. Chancellor, it is with the greatest pleasure that I present to you Mr Norman Coldham Fussell for admission to the degree of Doctor of the University.
I would now call on Mr. Norman Fussell, Doctor of the University, Dr. Norman Fussell, to deliver the occasional address. Chancellor, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Council Members, Graduates, Ladies and Gentlemen. Let me firstly say how encouraged I am to receive the award of Doctor of the University from Griffith University. I have very proud memories of my decade as a member of the University Council, including my long period of service as Deputy Chancellor and as Chair of Property and Finance. Griffith University moved ahead with great strides in that decade with the big changes that came from amalgamations. It has grown to a student body today of some 24,000 together with 2,600 staff and with that a great expansion of its presence. One just has to look at its role here on the South Bank with the conservatorium and now the new College of Art, which is approaching completion. Together with, of course, Nathan and Mount Gravatt and the research park in between, the continually growing Gold Coast campus, and of course that very stylish campus that is emerging in the city of Logan. Coupled with that growth has been enormous growth in the operating budget of the university to some $300 million a year. It has become a large business by any standard. Griffith has truly become the university for the southeast growth corridor of Queensland, and whilst doing that, has entrenched both its research and its academic capabilities to rank with the best universities in the land. As many of you will know, I've spent a lifetime involved in the developing industries of Australia, mining, engineering services. At the same time, I have been fortunate enough to experience internationally those same businesses. That experience has left a number of issues indelibly etched in my memory. Firstly, all enterprise is about people. Secondly, skills and experience will always win through. Thirdly, education topical this afternoon, has become a lifelong learning experience. And fourthly, there is a need to accept that change is a continuing way of life. It has also led me to a strong belief that we all need to play a role in our broader community and that we all need to be aware of the broader geopolitical issues that face mankind. Let me deal firstly with the geopolitical issues. Globalisation is much discussed by those in favour and those against. We must all be aware that globalisation is not new. Julius Caesar, after all, was attempting a form of it 2,000 years ago, not to mention people like Alexander the Great and Napoleon and many others. In recent times, We've all seen globalisation in many forms. At the start of the 1800s, the Napoleonic Wars had choked off trade, political relationships and migration throughout Europe. By the mid-1800s, driven by the events in North America, Europe started to look outwards. Markets integrated, tariffs fell, investment flowed out from Europe and migration was boosted. And of course, by the turn of the century, countries like Australia and like Argentina were booming on the back of export trade, which is simply nothing else but globalisation. But nothing is forever, and the period between the wars saw the bus come. There were dramatic rises in tariffs, migration was restricted, protectionism reigned, jobs were in very short supply, and the international capital markets broke down. 
but that again has changed and since the 1970s tariffs have halved, world trade has tripled as a proportion of gross domestic product and capital flows have increased 25-fold. We have all lived through the Berlin Wall coming down, something that a lot of people believe would never happen. And we have seen the socialist countries being reshaped and embracing market forces. But particularly in the last 10 years, we have seen the World Wide Web grow from 50 pages to something well over 50 million pages today. We have to ask, has all of this lifted living standards of the world? And in short, the answer is yes. Some billion people on this globe still live on less than a dollar a day. But the last generation has seen billions more brought out of poverty and has seen the world start to deal with a burgeoning population. None of this is to say that globalisation is perfect. Governments in particular are finding it increasingly difficult to cope with their job now that the fences are largely down. International governing bodies like the World Bank and the World Trade Organisation have a much more powerful role than previously. And with all of this and with the enormous change in the information economy, we see design and manufacturing and mining and engineering practices all changing rapidly. We see the emergence of new materials that are completely changing the face of what we had come to know as the Industrial Revolution. Work practices continue to change their content and their role. To cope with all of this change, education has become more important. Whilst we will always have critics of the education system, the reality is that we are producing today the highest skilled and adaptive workforce ever in time. It leads to a need for work to be interesting and for work to be fun. No one wants the robot robotic type of work that we associate with the production of large runs of the T-model Ford car in what was the heyday of production line engineering. That work will increasingly be consigned to robots. Skills will more and more be in demand. More and more professions, and eventually all of them, will require continuing professional development, or what is better called lifelong learning. Most of you, our graduates today, have been prepared for a career in education. You will have an important role in the shaping of our future skills and the development of lifelong learning approaches. But that's not to say that you will all end up as teachers. A university education, to my mind, is the development of an ability to seek and to utilise knowledge and the subsequent skills acquired through that experience. Whatever you end up doing, the education skills that you have acquired will stand you in good stead. Importantly, as you go into the community, you should also prepare yourself to play a meaningful role in the community outside of your work. The strength of any community depends on participation. There is an onus on all of us to participate. To participate whatever that be by by way of family, or by way of church, or by way of service organisations, or charities, or schools, or governments, is a matter of choice for the individual. But the important issue is that you do participate in the community. In closing, let me once again thank Griffith University for my award this evening, but more particularly, let me take this opportunity to wish all of you, our new graduates, an interesting and a fruitful life ahead. Thank you.
Chancellor, I'm pleased to have this opportunity to thank Mr Norman Fussell for his stimulating address. But first I'd like to offer to you, the new graduates, to your families and friends, my congratulations on the contributions you've each made to these achievements being celebrated this evening. Graduations are an important time for you as you leave the university, but they're also important times for us who stay at the university to think about what we do, how we do it, and how may we do it better. In this context, Mr Fussell's comments about the changing nature of the world in which we all live are relevant to you in, your, in the next stages of your life, but they're also important issues for us within the university because we also must be a lifelong learning institution if we, like you, are going to make the contribution that we should to our communities. I'd also add there's a very strong bond now, whether you like it or not, and I hope you do like it, between your futures and our future. As you as new graduates go into your careers and contribute positively to your communities and your professions, you will enhance the reputation of Griffith University. Conversely, as we in the university continue to grow the reputation of the university, this will add value to the quality of uh, add quality to the value of your degree. So in this way, we're linked together, and I hope that you will appreciate that link and manifest that link by joining the Alumni Society of the University. So I'd now ask you to join with me in thanking Mr Fustle for his address. Ladies and gentlemen, Griffith University tonight wishes to extend a special thank you to Cheryl Malavi, a student graduating tonight from the Master of Special Education who has been signing for us this evening. The ceremony is now concluded. When the music begins, please rise and remain standing as the staff and dais parties, along with the graduates, retire. <laughs> 